guys to watch and subscribe to Wasi History TV channel for more content about the history of Ghana. Hi there, I welcome you today to our Wasi um, History TV virtual lessons. Today I want us to look at the, I mean, the French or France colonial policies in West Africa. We have already looked at that of the British um, colonial um, policies sorry, in West Africa. And today I want us to look at that of the French policy in West Africa and I, I know you recall that of the European policies the I mean the British policies in their West African Dominion right good and I also am aware that you also know some of the colonies that the British had in West Africa good so let's begin the I mean well, let's begin with our lesson objectives and as I said this topic is a direct continuation of that of the um, partitioning of Africa so the link is in the description go and watch if you have not watched that video on partition of Africa so let's begin with our lesson objectives so one of our lesson objectives would be that by the end of this lesson you should be able to identify the colonial policies in West Africa so as we did for the British you should also be able to identify the colonial policies in West Africa then again state the advantages a person enjoys for becoming a Frenchman in West Africa and we would look at we will later look at what does it mean to be called a Frenchman in French West Africa now when you hear me say French West Africa I'm talking about the colonies of French Are you okay? or France in West Africa yes we know that the Berlin conference as I earlier stated was set the stage for eventual military invasion and conquest of West Africa. So after the Berlin Conference, all the European countries were coming in to actually, you know, conquer the lands in Africa. And we have also said again that France was the country that actually had the lion's share. I think there is a, a mistake over there. It's supposed to be eight. So France actually had the lion's share. And they had Burkina Faso, they had uh, Benin, they had Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea, Mali, Mauritania, Nigeria, and Senegal. All these were uh, the colonies of France. So, like I said, it could be asked in the objectives as to which of these colonies was not a colony of France in West Africa. And you should be able to do that for us. Good. So let's look at that of the, the, the French or I mean uh, uh, political or administrative policies so again the French also had a policy of assimilation which also sought to civilize in indigenous and gradually turn them into what they called petit français or junior French uh, men petit français is the same as junior French men so like we earlier indicated with that of the British the European, the, the, what do you call it, the, the French also had a similar view or a similar world view about the African people or the West African people. They also felt that Africans or the cultures of Africans were barbaric and therefore there was the need for them to civilize them. But as I always say, that that assertion was actually not true. Because today we can all verify, we can all testify that our culture has a lot of moral values more than that of the, the kind of culture they wished for us. And you know, today they are still telling us that we are barbaric because we, we, we are refusing to accept, you know, the issue of gay in our community. So they brand such community as barbaric that you are static, you don't want to move forward, the world is changing, so change. And they are forcing our leaders, you know, to actually accept gayism in our communities. And you ask yourself, really, is this really a civilized society? A civilized society that accepts gay? And then the branded uncivilized society says, we are not going to accept gay. So which of these two, I mean, civilization 
is actually civilized. Our society is actually civilized. You know, Europe is smart, and that's a way of controlling Africans. But let's move on. Now, the highest among all these assimilated people or the petit Francais, remember in the British colony, we call them the Creoles, and we've established that already. It could be asked in the objective question that the highest among all the assimilated people in British colonies is known as the Creoles. In French colonies, we call them Petit Francais or Junior Frenchmen. And the highest among these Junior Frenchmen were called the Evolues. The Evolues were known as the Evolved Ones. So you know, which means you have evolved. You know, you have moved from your primitive state as it was perceived about you to uh, a more evolved, you know, kind of um, 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 you know, <laughs> it's, it's quite funny, right? It's quite funny, it's quite funny. And they were colonial subjects trained in to, of course, to work in the various colonial, of course, uh, of course positions. And the French used a lot of the Africans in their colonial administration. A lot, a lot. That is, if you could speak and write and all of that in, in, in French. And you know, that even explains why today we have a lot of Africans in the French, I mean, national team. Uh, you, you can get, of course, about eight or so, you know, of course, players in the French national team. And that should, of course, uh, tell you how they were interested in actually making you to be part of their country. Now, the, 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 in, in French West Africa, unlike the British, that had a separate administration for each of the colonies, political machine for each of the colonies, in French West Africa, all the colonies that we mentioned were integral part. They were part of the metropolitan country. And all the colonies in West Africa were considered as overseas provinces, which means that these provinces are part of France. The British did not see their colonies as being part of the Britain, you know, of course Great Britain or the country. But in France, they were seen as part of them. So it therefore means that France then becomes the capital town of all the, all the colonies that they had. That's quite interesting. And so West Africans were regarded as subject of what? Of France. They were regarded as what? Subject of France. Okay? And if you were subject of France, like children, they were also expected to, you know, pay some patriotic duties to their mother country because France was considered as the mother country. So like a branch, you know, kind of. And that's quite yeah, interesting, you know, interesting. And so to the French, what, what happened was that they were saying that, okay, we are civilizing you. We are giving you civilization, the so-called civilization in quote. We are giving it to you. Okay, now what do you also have to give to your mother? If your mother is feeding you, what do you also have to, of course, have to give to your mother as a, as a way of reciprocating what, of course, you know, was done, was that you give them a taste of work. So you work for us and we give you civilization. We teach you how to speak French. We teach you how to read in French. We teach you how to talk in French. We teach you how to dress in French. We teach you how to sing, you know, everything French. And... Since we are giving you, that's the benefit you are getting. So we also give you work to do. And the work was the fact that we will make you, of course, you know, fight and produce for your mother country. That is the, 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 the work. So when there is war, we will call upon you to go and fight for your mother country. We will come and recruit you. When there is a, what do you call it? Um, 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 if we want a particular commodity, Raw materials will fall on you to give it to us. Okay, and this I mean, type of colonial pact or system is still with us today, which is really sad. So, West Africans were deemed civilized. Uh, of course, that were deemed civilized were rewarded by conferring the privileged status of French, um, I mean, citizen on them. So, you know, I'm sure they had some kind of way, some kind of mechanism, some kind of guideline to. To, to verify whether you were deemed civilized. And a deemed civilized man in French West Africa was somebody who could do everything French, speak, wear, clothes, you know, everything French as we deemed civilized. If you were deemed, then they would confer to you 
as a French citizen. So you know, we become a citizen of Gambia or, or I mean, uh, uh, sorry, uh, I mean Benin or whatever, but a citizen of France. Now, to become a citizen of France, again, apart from you being, I mean, undergoing through, the, you know, tuition, if you were also born in any of these four um, municipalities in Senegal, you were eventually, automatically, you were considered as a French, of course, citizen. So Saint Louis, uh, Gori, uh, Fouriski, and then Dakar. If you were born in any of these four countries in Senegal, uh, and of course, municipalities in Senegal, you were also considered to be a French, of course, citizen. They must also have been decorated with legend of honor and military award. That's yes, you should work for. You should work for that. You know, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite interesting, right? Good. So let's move on to now. When you become a French, of course, citizen. What is the? What are the, some of the advantages that you get from you becoming a French um, citizen? And some of the advantages is that. You, when you become a Frenchman, the, the, you were subject to French law and access to French courts. So it means if somebody is actually trying to, um, you know, cheat you, you could, I mean, you could send the person to court. But if you were not deemed, if you were not given this honor, if somebody cheats you, uh, you've been cheated, and that's it. You, you can't do anything about it. You can't do anything about it. Good. And then more so. Um, the black Frenchman was also exempted from something of course, they called indigenous, okay? And indigenous was, which is a legal system where, which enabled the French administrator officer to sentence any African for up to two years, you know, up to two solid years, you sentence any African, okay? Up to two solid years without, with forced labor, without any trial. And that is what, of course, they called the indigenous, okay, and that's what they call the indigent, the, the indigenous. So if you are just walking by, somebody could just call you, sentence you, you know, for two years without any, you know, any trial. And <laughs> that was sad. But if you were a French, of course, citizen, then you were exempted from this, if you, you achieve that, you were exempted from that. Good, let's then move on to the next advantages. So the next one was that a French man could commit compulsory labor for monetary payment. So if somebody was forcing you to work, uh, you could pay off. But if you were not a French man, if you could not do things French, it means that you work uh, at, by force. Yeah, a person uh, could also be appointed to the post in France uh, in the colony. For example, Blaise Dange, of course, of Senegal, was the first black African elected to French National Assembly and mayor. He became called mayor of Dakar, which was the capital of the Federation of French West Africa. So all the, I mean, the colonies of France, you know, they called themselves the Federation of French West Africa, and Dakar became their capital town. That is why if you were born in Senegal, of course, you could, in those municipalities, you could be, um, you could be free from all of that. Let's move on to the next one. However, the assimilation policy was not, <laughs> was not practical, you know. How can you decide to, uh, you know, Europeanize all these people? It, 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 it was not possible. Only 80,000. Uh, you know, of the 15 million, you know, French West African were able to become French, of course, citizens, were able to pass. 78,000 of even those who had become French citizens, because, they, I mean, of course, they were born in the four communities. So 78,000 were French, of course, citizens, out of the 80,000, just because they were born in those four. So it was not practical. It was not practical. So the French had to abandon that idea and then change the policy as a British state. Um, and then they changed in the 1920s, they changed the policy of association, which was advocated as the most appropriate for French Africa. And in association, they say that we are only associating you with the mother country. 
it, you know, they, they describe it as that the relationship between a horse and also uh, a rider. But many scholars have actually said that this is not practicable because, I mean, uh, there is always the tendency of France, um, um, you know, um, um, detecting the pace of development of these of our countries. And indeed, all the Francophone countries that we know in West Africa today, most of them still have their economies tied to France, which, of course, is not the ideal way. Good. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, I wish you to, to, of course, subscribe. If you have any questions, my number is there, 54 Subscribe and share. Bye-bye.